continental connoisseur of the table. What did you think of the dinner? Oh, well, the dinner. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, the dinner. <laughs> Wait, what can I say? Well, go on, Bruno. Mum wants to know what you thought of the dinner, so tell her. Do I have to? Yes. Uh, all right, all right. I cannot tell a lie, Mrs B. I must be brutally frank. It was wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Just one small, tiny thing I'd like to know. Yes? What was it? <laughs> Who cares what it was? It was hot and it was free. What more do you want? I was just trying to be polite. Well, don't. This is my house, and if anyone's going to be polite around here, it's me, so shut up. Oh, that's really polite, that is. The Beau Brummel of Wombat Crescent. <laughs> Listen, mate, when I want to, I can have oodles of polite. I can out-polite you any day I like. Oh, yeah, I can just see it now. Come in, Your Majesty. Did you bring your own grog? Oh, and move your royal bum. You're sitting in my chair. <laughs> Ted would never say that to the Queen. He would never say, move your royal bum. He'd say, move your royal bottom. Oh. Quite right. See, I know how to talk to the Queen. Not that you Italians have a Queen anyway. Half the time you don't have a Parliament. <laughs> At least it's democratic. <laughs> it's like jury duty over there. Everybody has a go. If you've got a collar on your shirt, you're an MP. <laughs> if you've got a suit on, they make you Prime Minister. Oh, rubbish. And if you can run backwards, they make you Minister for the Army. <laughs> A bunch of commos and crooks and gangsters. Oh, all right, all right then, Mr Henry Kissinger. What about the crooks in Canberra? How can they be crooks? They're Aussies. Honest as the day is long. Honest? <laughs> yeah. What about Malcolm when he said, we will not touch Medibank? Oh, well, that's different. Why? Nobody believes Malcolm. <laughs> I mean, that was an election speech and you're allowed to lie in then. Why? So everybody will vote for you, of course. Jeez, you're a political nong. I mean, look, if they told the truth, nobody would vote for any of them. We'd end up with Ida Buttrose running the country. But she does run the country, doesn't she? No, Mum, Ida Buttrose does not run the country. Oh, oh, no, no, I suppose Mike Walsh helps a bit. Mum, <laughs> Mike Walsh and Ida do not run the country. I mean, you've got to be elected. I mean... Who did you vote for at the last election? Oh, no, great. No, my lips are sealed. My vote is my business. But I'll give you a little clue. The first name's Tammy. <laughs> well, Tammy Fraser isn't in Parliament. Well, that's only because not enough of us voted for her. <laughs> oh, Mrs B, that means you voted informal. Like me, of course. I always vote informal. Why? Well, I'm not going to put a suit and tie on for those bludgers. <laughs> Anyway, it's enough of this political glomp. Where's me pudding? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. There's no pudding tonight. Well, why not? I like pudding. A man knows where he is with pudding. Why can't we have any pudding? Will you shut up about the bloody pudding? There is no pudding. Just eat your bloody ice cream. All right, I'll eat me bloody ice cream. What sort is it? Gelato. Yeah, that'd be right. Oh, well, there's no pudding. Well, it's either that or a slab of ethnic ice cream. There's only one choice. What, Ted? I'll have a beer. Oh, now, Ted, you've already had a couple tonight. The other night you had one too many and you were a bit, well, a bit under the weather. What do you mean? It means you were pissed. <laughs> Was not. Yes, you were so too, Ted. I can always tell when you're a bit tipsy. How? You said you loved me. Oh, did not. <laughs> did I? Yes, you did, Ted. Oh, sorry, Phil. <laughs> Right, Ted, it was rather fun, really. It's just that I don't want you coming down with a bad case of the Merles. Oh, how is Auntie Merle? We haven't seen her for ages. Oh, well, she's in Brisbane, great, visiting her mother. Oh, you mean she's in Brisbane drying out? Greta! Well, Mum, we're all grown up. We all know that Auntie Merle goes to that peaceful little island to get away from the vodka. And let's face it, Mrs B, that story about visiting a mother just won't wash anymore. Why not? Because her mother died ten years ago. Be that as it may, for the sake of the family name, I think it is better that we refer to Auntie Merle as visiting her mother. Why? Why not tell everyone the truth that Auntie Merle's bouncing around a drunk farm? Ted, <laughs> Merle has just had a few problems piling up. <laughs> the only problems she's got piling up are vodka bottles and they're all empty. Ted, that's quite enough. I now declare Merle closed. My great dishes. Oh, why do I always have to help with the dishes? Why can't Bruno help for a change? He does them at home. Uh, bloody crawler. <laughs> That's different. At home, he is a husband. Here, he is a guest. Well, what about me? You're just a daughter. Besides, I've got some ladies' things I want to talk about.
that. What? Oh, you know, Greg, just ladies' things. <laughs> oh, right. Ted, what do they talk about in there? Well, I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> Give them a sink full of hot water and a pair of rubber gloves and they'll chat for hours. <laughs> no, no, but, but what about? I mean, every time I go in there, they shut up. Yeah, well, that's women for you, mate. I mean, I know about women because Thelma's been one. As far as I can ascertain, they only ever talk about three things. What? The new gynaecologist, the price of spuds, and their old gynaecologist. And that's it? Ah, oh, occasionally Paul Newman's cute little bum rates are mentioned. <laughs> Someone should blow actors up. Yeah, 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 sure. Righto. What do you want to watch tonight? Is there anything on without Bert Newton in it? Not much. <laughs> There's the news and a couple of movies. Yeah, John Wayne in it? Nope. Oh, well... Nothing worth watching, then, is there? Oh, hang on. The Leyland brothers are on. You like the Leyland no, brothers. No, I don't. I hate them. Why? Because Bob sponsors them. Him and his horrible debts and land commercials. He's ruined a good show. Oh, Bull, the commercials don't make any difference. They do. Listen, the Leyland brothers used to do adventurous things like sailing around Australia in a combi van. <laughs> now all they do is visit boomerang farms at harvest time and film the Tasmanian frowning championships. <laughs> Come on, Teddles, let's watch Bob's commercials. They're always good for a laugh. Nah. He's a good performer, Bob. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not going to turn on 800 bucks worth of colour telly to watch that brother of mine rush out and shout at me, come on down to Bobby Bullpit's Datsun Land and let me do it right for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob's all right. He's not. He's horrible. I hate him. Hate, hate, vomit. Here you are, Ted. Oh. And a glass for Bruno. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Listen, B. Listen, did you pour mine first? I like the fresh bit out of the top of the bottle. Give him the rest. <laughs> yes, dear. Uh, Ted, read the Merle problem. Eh, uh, what? Well, you know how she's visiting you-know-who on you-know-what island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well... Well, what? I've invited Bob to stay. Pickle me, grandmother. You love me. Oh, I don't. I hate you. Hate, hate Lemon Sago. <laughs> lemon Sago? It's the only thing in the world I hate more than you. <laughs> ah, you're a riot, Teddy boy. Always out of step. You hate me, but the world loves me. Well, the rest of the world must be loony then. They didn't have to grow up with you. You didn't grow up, Teddy. You just got bigger. <laughs> Watch it, mate. Yep. Now that I'm doing my own commercials, I've become a star. People stop me in the street and ask me for my autograph. Yeah, on the checks you sent them last week. <laughs> the guys at the film company reckon that I am a, a born actor, a natural talent. They call me the Kamal of the car yards. <laughs> Bull. It's true. In fact, I am so good that I'm thinking of packing in the car game and taking up a full-time career in movies. Great idea. Where are you moving to? <laughs> Movies, pictures, you know, telly. I'm gonna be a star. Not just any old actor, but a real star. Like Ken James. <laughs> you mean like Skippy? <laughs> Listen, Teddy, let's face it. I am the talented one in the family. You're just the big one. I mean, I mean, no, 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 don't, don't take it personally. It doesn't mean that I'm that much better than you, but credit where credit is due, I do have this amazing ability of convincing people when I act. Bull. You convincing? Listen, mate, if you can convince me you're someone else, I'll, I'll wash every Datsun in your car yard for a week. You're on. A whole week? Oh, look, better than that. Let's make it a whole year. It'll never happen. Yeah? Who's this? Uh. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for a wonderful welcome. And now I'd like you to give a big welcome to my wonderful wife, Patty. <laughs> Patty, Patty, uh... 
Sir Robert Menzies. <laughs> it's Bert! Bert Menzies? I never heard of him. <laughs> Thelma! Answer the phone, woman, will you? Why can't you answer it? Oh, fair go, Phil. I'm busy doing something else. I'm talking to Bob. Why can't Bob answer well, it? Well, he's talking to me. You answer the phone, will you? Oh, all right. Hello. I use palm olive because all the old Mrs. Australians do. And none of them look a day over 48. <laughs> do I win the high altitude sleeping bag of my dreams? <laughs> no. What are you doing working for palm olive? You're meant to be drying out. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear, 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 dear. What is it, Thelma? What's happened? Oh, just a minute, dear. It's Merle. She's escaped from the Rocker Island. <laughs> the plane. I'm coming. I just can't find my white gloves. You don't need gloves. You're going to Queensland. Yeah. They'll think you're a traffic cop. <laughs> I found them. Oh. Isn't this amazing? One minute I'm hacking the fat off the chops and the next thing I'm a jet setter going off to save Merle from the demon drink. It's a rescue mission. It's a mission impossible. <laughs> oh, Bob, worried sick as usual. Oh, Bob, I don't want you to worry about anything. She'll be all right. <laughs> Bob! Bob! Mm, mm. What time is it? Oh, oh, you are wonderful, honey, but I, I've got to go. My wife will kill me. Oh, 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 <laughs> it's me, Thelma. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Thelma. <laughs> if only I'd known it was you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's me. Relax. I, I'm leaving now to go what? and get Merle. And whatever you do, I want you to stop worrying. She'll be all right. Right. OK. See ya. I think I need a drink. Come on, Phil. Oh. Time and TAA wait for no man. Yes, yes, all right. I'm coming. G'day. Oh, Piggleby Grandmother, give a man a heart attack. What do you, what do you want? Nothing. I've well, got the... something for Mum. What? My laundry. Oh, but Craig, I'm going to Brisbane. Oh, that's OK, Mum. I don't care where you do it. <laughs> all right. Thank heavens I packed the iron and the rinse. Uh, how long are you going for? Oh, only overnight. I'll call around tomorrow. Uncle Bob here? Yes, in the kitchen, getting a beer. Oh, great idea. I think I'll join him. Yes, Leave the money on the fridge. Oh, yeah. Right, Phil, let's go. You ready? Yes, sir. Come on, let's go. G'day. Oh, pick up me, Grandmother. You'll, you'll drive a man mad. It's like bloody Pitt Street. What are you doing here? I fixed the blender for Mrs. B again. Mrs. B, what on earth induced you to mix spackle in it? <laughs> Well, some stupid, mentally deficient cretin did. Don't look at me. Must have been Neville. Neville's a concrete Aboriginal. Why would he want to mix up spackle? Well, his head fell off. Bye-bye, <laughs> Bruno. Bye-bye, Bob! Bye, Bob! Come on, woman. Bye-bye, Craig! Elba! So... So the farmer says... <laughs> so the farmer... <laughs> so the farmer says to the travelling salesman... G'day, Bob. Just a minute, I've got a joke on the boil. So... So the farmer... <laughs> so the farmer... <laughs> so the farmer says to the travelling salesman... <laughs> that wasn't Doris, that was my horse! <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> Why didn't you stop me? I tried to. Watch it, mate. I've fired salesman for less. How are you going, Bruno? You're looking good, Bruno. Thanks, Bob. And how's my one and only favourite little niece, Glenda? Greet her. Whatever. <laughs> you lucky dog. How are you fixed for wheels? Uh, I don't need a Datsun, thanks, Bob. Valiant's just fine. <laughs> I saw a couple of your commercials last night, Bob. Geez, you're getting good. How do you do all those different characters? Raw talent, my boy. Raw star quality. It's not what Grumblebum says. Uh, it's, oh, yeah, that reminds me. As a matter of fact, there's a little wager on, and you can help. 
How? Hey, Bruno, it's not what you can do for me. It's what I can do for you. Let's face it. What a godfather's for. Hey. Food, food. There must be some food here somewhere. She can't spend it all on shampoo and Kleenex. <laughs> Fine thing. A man works hard all day and comes home to a kitchen full of starvation. Where is that food? Bloody woman. I'll have to ring Brisbane and get her paged. Good day. Oh, listen, you little deviated dago. Stop sneaking up behind me. What have you got there? I bought some food. Oh, thank God for that. Give us it. Just a minute, just a minute. This is all raw. And Bob's not home here to cook it. I'll starve. Don't worry, Tettles. It's all under control. Under control? Listen, mate, all, the only thing I could find to eat was those little bone-shaped biscuits, and I'm not eating any more of them. <laughs> they give you the trotch. <laughs> Listen, Bob phoned to say he won't be home for dinner tonight because, well, he's sort of working. That'd be right. He's out there conning some poor little disco loony. And uh, Greek and I have got to go out, so I've organised for one of my relations to come over and cook for you. I'm not having one of your mad aunties coming over here and, and crushing spaghetti vines in me bathtub. <laughs> it's a bloke. A bloke? What sort of bloke would know how to cook? Is he a poof? <laughs> His name's Roberto Bertolucci and he's on holiday here from Chicago. He's American? Yeah. Oh, well, that's all right. John Wayne was American. <laughs> and GMH, of course. That'll be him now. But, but, what, what makes you think this bloke knows how to cook? Hey, he's very big in restaurants. <laughs> so is Ronald McDonald. <laughs> and look at him. He wears makeup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Will see. You're going on like a bunch of poof soccer players. <laughs> Which one of you ethnic fairies scored the goal? Hey, Bruno, uh, who's this? This is my father-in-law, Ted Bullpit. G'day. Hey, Ted Bullpit. Yeah. I am Roberto Bertolucci. I kiss your face. Get off. Don't you dare kiss me. I'm Australian. We don't kiss. We shake hands or we flatten you. Now, what's it going to be? <laughs> hey, Bruno, I have insulted the father of your wife. The father of your beautiful wife, Glenda. Greeter. Hey, whatever. Get on the outfit. Is he the full quid? I said, are you the full quid? <laughs> hey, what do, you, what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> have you just come over here from a castrol ad, have you? <laughs> How'd you get over here? Did you get driven over by Bonnie and Clyde? <laughs> Look out, Elliot Ness is behind you. Oh, what sort of a deal is he? <laughs> Careful, Tim. <laughs> What's he got a Tommy gun in the violin case, has he? <laughs> hey, shut up your mouth. I don't know like people shouting in my face. Oh, listen to him, listen to him. Whose relation is he? <laughs> we, uh, matter of fact, Ted, call him the Godfather. Oh, he's your Godfather, is he? Oh, no, 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 Ted. What? The Godfather. You know. Hey, what? I call me grandmother. You don't mean it. He's... Yes, yes. And I've been slinging off them. Mm. And the violin case is a... <laughs> Oh my God! What do you think of it? Oh, it's beautiful, wonderful. I, I, I don't know why I didn't put it there before. I, I love Fiat, so I always have. Glad to hear it. He's a good boy, that Bruno. He's the one who got me the posters. Oh, he, he's, he's a little... Uh, he's a beauty. <laughs> I can't wait to show him my appreciation for all the things he's done. <laughs> I want you to take care of him. You're lucky to have him. I know, I know. I was only saying to my greeter, oh, I don't want you marrying one of our normal Australian boys. What you need is a good wog. <laughs> a a wogga wogga boy. A boy from Wagga Wagga. A preferably Italian. Good to hear it. No. You want to become a member of my family? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thrilled a bit, thrilled a bit, yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> now, you got to show me some respect. No, 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 no. Huh? Down on your knees. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, yeah. Now, you get down on your knees. Yeah. Right down on the carpet. And you crawl up. 
and you kiss my feet. Kiss your feet? Yeah, you don't want to do it? I want to, I want to. Okay, kiss away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all right. You promise? Yeah, I, I'll kill that wog. <laughs> right, I'm off. I'll see you later. Get out of here. Oh, no, Ted, you're coming too. What do you mean? What's this for? There's a lot of dirty Datsuns out there that need washing. <laughs> Next, Ruth Cracknell, Gary McDonald, Mother and Son, Forever Classic Comedy, Fox Classics. Blanche Elizabeth Devereaux. Your initials spelled...